What he said 24 hours ago is a threat. It's very serious. Should the world, and more importantly, should, should Kim Jong-un take that literally? Uh, I think what his point was is not necessarily literally as in, you know, we're going to come after you. It was a defense is what he was saying. He's saying America is not going to be screwed with. For the last eight years, we've had a policy of let's, do, let's go ahead and go to the world. Let's go to China and let them take the lead. Let's go to the United Nations. Let's see if sanctions work. It has gotten us to the point where they have at least what we think is 60 uh, nuclear weapons, miniaturized weapons, and including a missile system that can reach probably half of the United States of America. So I think the president's point is, is what this whole idea of being PC and kumbaya and let's be always calm and collected has gotten them closer to them being able to bully everyone in the world. They've already threatened Guam before. They've threatened America before. They put propaganda out there. And I think the, the president's point is, I'm not screwing around with you for another four years. Sure, but the, but the implication, as we just heard in the State Department briefing, is what the president said. You know, it implies that use force with force, right? That, that nuclear Well, I think his point is, is that we're not just going to have diplomacy on the table and you're not going to get to keep going forward and marching and threatening so the world. That. So you oh, believe I, I that? I absolutely believe saying. that the president is making it very clear that the use of force is an option that I'm not going to run away from. If you think you can continue nuclear tests, continue a nuclear program, continuing threat in the world and directly saying you're coming after the United States of America, you need to know this is a new day. The last eight years of a policy that allowed you to get those weapons okay. and to be this bully, we're not going to let you have another four years of that. Okay. Rick Wilson, I want to make sure I get you in also just responding to the same question and, and also just responding to Ben. What do you think? First off, Ben's answer to you betrays a level of, of, of naivety about nuclear weapons and about the Korean Peninsula in, per, in specific that is utterly staggering. I, 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 that was some weapons-grade stupidity right there. Because, because so? the oh. fact of the matter is you, can't, you, don't, you don't threaten people. The, the deterrence model is this. You say to a, another country, if you hit me with nuclear weapons, I will respond. Therefore, neither country does it. You don't say, if you talk bad about me, if you threaten me, I could respond with fire and fury. That's not a code word for some little tap on the wrist. That's a code word for the first use of nuclear weapons. This is entirely out of the bounds of what a nation like okay, ours should do. First of all, we could level North Korea, to, we could level North Korea into a shimmering plane of glass. It's not out of bounds to defend yourself. And it doesn't mean that we're going to use nuclear weapons. This is the part where I say you're being irresponsible because you're saying that the only option America had would be nuclear weapons. No, if ben, you I didn't know say anything about fact, what we fact, would do with North Korea, it would probably ben, be fact, going after the bunkers yeah, that on, carry it. In fact, deterrence and diplomacy finish. have worked for this country for generations. And the fact of the matter is, the failures of the of administrations of both so you, parties over the like last 25 this, years this have led North Korea to be no, where it is now. No, we're you, here, you can't. Ben, let me be clear. You're saying it. Over the last that a years. military strike on North Korea, even in a non-nuclear strike, will not result in the deaths of millions of Rick, South Rick, Koreans, Rick, Rick. hundreds, a hundred thousand listen Americans. To, listen to ben, one thing you I just said not, here. Ben, ben, listen, this is a matter by which you have displayed your absolute ignorance of the Korean Peninsula. You can name call you this want to, but you're not talking about the reality of the facts. We're a military operation. This is not something where a military okay. operation that you throw off the let, back let, let me of, go, of Let me go back Trump into the point that the president was making. Could possibly lead to anything except incredibly damaging and let, horrifying let me go back into the point okay, South Korea. I, okay let, let me go back in the point here what you're missing obviously is you're implying that somehow over the last eight years our policy of hundred percent diplomacy and deferring to Japan and the United Nations has somehow been a success it's been a total failure you and I wouldn't be having this conversation right now if it wasn't for the fact that they've been able to do exactly what they've done with their nuclear program and including be have the ability to reach half the United States of America if we keep going down the road that you're going down and what you're saying is successful then what does failure look like to you? 60 nuclear weapons you're saying is successful? Having half of America be ben, reached I by North Korea is successful? I just, I just said that the failures of administrations of both parties for the last 25 years in, in the Korean Peninsula have led us to this point. The fact of the matter is, though, <laughs> that when you I, I, I'm level, sorry, when you're that's just not accurate. about nuclear weapons and fire and fury, you're in a whole different zone. You're in a whole uh, different fire zone. and fury and it requires this is again this is again and where you're and judgment none of which Donald Trump has in his strong suit and with, with all due respect is, he's sitting there with saying all due respect that is a threat of fire a and fury strike are you in again favor again, of a again this is strike, this is where you're you're being chicken ben, are little you in the sky favor is of a falling of nuclear strike on the Korean Peninsula? listen just, to the just, words just coming out of my mouth do you favor a Korean do you favor listen to the words coming out of my mouth if you're going to ask a dumb question do you favor a preemptive strike Ben okay it's a simple question yes again do you favor listen to listen 
It's not as simple as that. Ben, you're turning yes us into no. second it's grade question, here. It's not as simple as what you're saying. It's a simple question. There are other question. options Donald on the table. Trump, there are other options. On the table. You, you can love okay. the guy. Is that, that you obviously to be don't option. care Do what anyone else says. you think that's a great says. idea? Okay, I'm going to finish ben, now. Ben, hang idea. on. Rick, 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 Rick. It's Rick. simple, Ben. Rick, Rick, hang on. Let, Rick. let Ben have a moment. Listen carefully because you're having a hard time understanding this. There are other options militarily besides only nuclear options. Fire and fury does not necessarily mean only push the red button for a nuclear war. It is incredibly incompetent and ignorant to imply that the only option By that our military has is to that actually that do Korea nuclear war. Will, that is not what the president said yesterday. That is not what the president said you yesterday. Accept, You're implying that there's only then, one option. By, by there is then, more than one option. By let's, ask Rick, let's ask Rick. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me cut through this for a second. I, ben, I, I totally understand the point you're making and how, Rick, you're arguing against it. But so, to Ben's point, if, you know, the diplomacy thus far has not been working, what, in your opinion, and you have the State Department saying, let's, let's give it a shot, let's get North Korea at the table, in your, in your opinion, what's, what, what is the best option here? Look, you have to move this into a deterrence frame. And a deterrence frame is not <laughs> threatening a preemptive strike. A deterrence so, frame is... So do what we're still on, doing right now. Weapons are deployed and used by North Korea... If okay. nuclear weapons are deployed and used by North Korea, then a nuclear response is on the table. But you don't lay it out there. And well, look, Donald Trump was the, not talking about uh, not, he was not talking about a them. conventional strike. The co you're the, you're the telling me that hardly coded. You're telling me the only time that the president can use the words fire and fury is literally if nuclear weapons are in the air. Are you in, are you literally then kidding me right if now? You're going to pull something that is out of the that book is the worst Isaiah foreign policy I've ever heard in my entire life. Ben, there are boundaries and there are, there are ways you talk about deterrence. General Mattis did it right today. Donald Trump shot from the lip, as he usually does, because he is ignorant of history, he is ignorant of strategy, he is ignorant I, of diplomacy, and he's I certainly get, ignorant of the use like Donald Trump, of deterrence but the foreign in nuclear, policy in you're describing, warfare. The foreign policy that you're describing has been a failure over the last year. When the president says he's going to protect and defend the United States of America, and then the only option you give the president is nuclear war, that just shows that you have no understanding but, but of no the option is deterrence. The option is active deterrence and diplomacy. You We've done sanctions at this point. Let's move. Let's ben, move. if this you is, strike is, North Korea right. with conventional <laughs> weapons, Ben, if you strike North, and I ask you this question, if you strike North Korea with conventional weapons, you understand that a that the most heavily armored area of the world for artillery is on the South Korean border with North Korea. They will slog the hell out of South Korea out of Seoul. This is not going to be pretty. And you're, and you're saying that, that you think I, I, there are I, no I, consequences to this kind of action, and it's really irresponsible. No, no. What I'm on, I want to stop. I want to, let me just pivot, please. Let, let me just ask, Ben, to you, and then, Rick, I want you to weigh in on the, the different messaging, right, coming out of the White House. So you have the language, fire and fury, that the president uses. Then you have the language that we've heard from both Tillerson and from Mattis. It's not all entirely on the same page. I don't know if you guys were listening to Admiral no. Kirby a second ago on how, mm. I mean, essentially it's, it's been a catch-up situation as this was off the cuff, Ben. So yeah. can you speak to the issue of Look, I think the not president, all being yeah. on the same page? I, I think the president was being blunt and off the cuff. It was very clear from how he said that that it was off the cuff, but I do think the tone should was... You was off, should you be well, off I the think, cuff on North Korea? I think the words that people obsessed with him saying are fire and fury are words that, you know what, do you want him to use a different word? His point was to speak directly to Kim Jong-un and to make it very clear that it is a new day, you're but not going to get away. But he didn't give his administration wait, 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 a heads up. He well, didn't the, give his administration a heads up let, on let, using right, that let me, kind of language let me, let me say about this. North Korea. Let me say this. I think that there are multiple ways that you can deal with diplomacy. Only having a kumbaya diplomacy that we've gone, which is go to Japan, go to the United Nations, and all of a sudden we'll kind of set back a little bit. That has been a failure to the point where half of America is now at risk, and you have a crazy guy with nuclear weapons that he can actually deliver in a real capacity. I know, but that still doesn't so mean the point president is, should be speaking off the right, cup no, on, my, cup on North Korea. my point is, his policy is, we're going to be tough. Now, can you have good cop, bad cop with the State Department? Right. Absolutely. I think that's what you've seen today. I think what How Tillerson is, is doing today. Well, I think you have to have more than just one avenue to talk to Kim Jong-un, because the one avenue of sole diplomacy mm -hmm. has gotten us nowhere but a crazy guy who now has nuclear weapons that he can deliver to half the United States of America. It did not work for eight, nine years. We've literally been doing it since the end of the Bush time. So you're talking nine plus years, nine and a half to be conservative. And now he has more of an arsenal than he's ever had before, even while sanctions have been in place.
imposed, and we have new right. sanctions. You right. can do two things at once. Rick, what but do you the think? president is what? not going to sit there and be bullied sure. by them. What the do you president, think of the, the good the cop, bad cop, president, cop as he always does, The president, as he always does, shot from the lip. He was riffing. He was whatever impulsive thing that drives him, drove him at that moment. And so, yes, you had to see the entire administration play catch up. And in a matter as consequential as a potential nuclear exchange, you have to have probity and you have to have judgment and you have to have discipline. And Donald Trump has never displayed those at any point in his life or his career. And so everybody that's scrambling, and by the way, I've talked to some of my friends in the military today who, who, who were in this world, and mm -hmm. the sense was, oh, dear God. It wasn't, hey, I, I this mean, is great, let's get on board with this great policy. I, it was, oh, dear God, this guy has yeah, no there, idea what there he's was doing. No, there was no policy that was announced. It was a president defending the fact that you have a leader that has the nuclear weapons and he can deliver. Policy. The, the policy of saying, if you continue to come after America or if you threaten America, we will defend yourself is a policy that I'm pretty sure almost every president in my lifetime has it, had. He didn't mean, but, it's but, not he, a new policy. He, said fire and Rick, Rick, he didn't mean ahead. a sternly a worded word. letter. So be kind and give him a hug and send him a gift. Is that what you want a diplomacy to be for a guy with nuclear you really, weapons? You really hey, we love that's, you. Then. You really believe that's what I'm suggesting? <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, that's a foreign policy over the last nine years that has been a failure. So we have okay. nuclear weapons that guy has now. So I would say it might you be time to try something You are unbelievably irresponsible and ignorant of the Korean Peninsula. It's astounding. Okay. Right? <laughs> On that, we're going to go. Um, Rick Wilson and Ben Ferguson, it's been a pleasure. Thank you both Thanks. so much Thanks, for a healthy Brooke. dialogue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!